Coming up today on That LTD Life, let's get paid with Build, an invoicing, estimates, time tracking, and expense tool available for a one-time fee over at AppSumo. Currently just $49 for the budget version. Tier one, that is the version I'm going to be using to produce this video. If you haven't seen my content before, I'm gonna try out this entire tool. We'll go through each and every button. I'll show you what everything does and I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like so you can make up your own mind about whether this is a good investment for your business. At the end of the video, I'll go through all of the different plans and pricing. There are quite a few options here, up to 700 bucks on this one-time cost, and then you can decide which one fits the bill for you. And I'll end out the video by giving you my final thoughts and a score zero to 10. All right, without further ado, let's jump right into the tool. So here's the dashboard for build. I've been playing around with it a little bit. I got a good feel for how everything works. I'm quite familiar with this type of tool. So let's go ahead and begin walking through it. There is a little onboarding wizard here. So you basically go through and you set up your currency. You personalize your account by uploading your logo. Notice I've got my logo in the upper right hand corner. A nice feature of build is you can actually manage multiple businesses from a single account. So if you add tier two and above, you'll get this feature. With tier one, we just get a single business, which I think is reasonable given the cost. You click right here on your logo and you can actually switch over to another business. So whether you personally own multiple businesses or maybe you wanna offer this as a service to clients, that's kind of up to you, but it's a cool feature built right in there. The next step they have you do in their onboarding wizard is to add a client. Your clients live over here in the left-hand sidebar. Just click on clients and you can see I've added in AppSumo right here. Now I can click on new client if I'd like, and then add in my new client here. We'll just call them, how about Apple? They're announcing some new Macs this week. I'm excited about that. And then you can fill in as much or as little information about the company as you like. I've added in an email address as well as a city. Now, before I hit record, I also created a custom field. So you can add as many different fields to clients, to invoices, to anything that you see on the tool here. You can add additional fields. What I did was add in a website. So I'm gonna go apple.com here. That is a required field because I made it. So I'll show you that momentarily. Let's go ahead and hit submit. And now I have a second client. Now the next step in their onboarding wizard was to create an item. Now I noticed that there is not a list of items on the left-hand sidebar, which I found to be a little bit puzzling until I went into settings and found that the items actually live over here. These are the items, physical goods, services that you might be offering to clients or to customers. So the first thing I would do if I were using this for my, my business today is load in all of our customers and then load in all of our products and services. So just head right over to this screen, hit create new, and then you can simply fill out this little form and add in all of the products and services that you want. Don't worry if you wanna offer reoccurring services, you can set that up in the invoicing section later on and I'll show you how that works. It's really nice, there's tax options here. So if you have certain items you want to charge taxes on, you can do that. But basically you're just gonna get an item title, a sale price, a purchase price, the tax rate, as well as an item description. Now, this is a good time to bring up those custom fields. What if there's more information that you want to display on each individual item? Well, right below items and services, we have custom fields. And you can see I created one here. It's applying to the client module. That's this one right there where we added in AppSumo and Apple. But if I wanted to add a custom field for a particular item or service, I could definitely do that. I just go under create new and then under module type, I will choose item. And let's say I was doing like t-shirts or something where I have multiple color options available. I could say that the item is going to be a color and then the field type will be a radio. And then I can enter in my options here. All right, so I added some color options and I can choose whether or not this is required. I'll leave it off for now. Now, if I head back to the items and services, I'll just open up my existing item just to show you that it's there. I have the color option so that when I'm choosing which item I'm actually going to sell, I can have it be very specific. Now, in all actuality, that custom field makes absolutely no sense. I was just demonstrating how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one right here. And there we go, it's now gone. But if you wanna add a custom field to literally any section that we're going to go through, you know, we've got our invoices, our estimates, our expenses, our projects, and our tasks. You could do that so you can keep things organized just how you like them. All right, so back to the onboarding wizard, just using this as a guide. Well, we've created our items. Now we need to set up our payment methods. There are three payment methods available on Build. We've got Stripe, PayPal, and Molly. Molly, the newest addition to this particular tool. So between these three, hopefully you can find one that works in your country, get it connected, and then you can begin accepting payments right away when you create an invoice and send it to a client, which is probably what we should do next. 
So just heading over to invoices right here, I can choose create invoice. By the way, we get a nice little dashboard, all of our invoices that we've created, when they are gonna be paid, if what's overdue. You can also see reoccurring templates over here if you want to set up some templates for reoccurring items that you might be sending out, like reoccurring bills in terms of maybe monthly or yearly services. But for now, let's just go ahead and create a regular old invoice. I'll click create invoice, choose my client here. This one's gonna be for Apple. I can add in my line items. Now it's gonna remember all of the items that I added in over in settings, but I could also add a new one here as well. Set a rate, choose a quantity or the number of hours it would take, and then you'll see the total over here. So this I've charging 299, if I update it to be two hours, then it will update to 598. You can add taxes right here for these items if you'd like, and you can even apply discounts. We can do flat rate discounts as well as percentage discounts. We can add attachments here, request signatures or add our own signature. And then we have invoice terms where if you wanna maybe make some notes about what the invoice terms are like net 30, and you can leave a little note here. And before I hit create, let's look over on this sidebar. This is where I can set up a recurring invoice. So that's kind of what I was getting at before. You just load in all of your items. And then if I wanted to charge this on a monthly basis, I toggle this switch on. I can choose the start date, the frequency, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. The payment method, now I haven't connected any payment processors up here, but you could set one up if you'd like. And then how many times it will actually be billed. Is it indefinite? Well, check this box. If it's not, set it to be however many times. If you're doing like a split payment, 12 equal payments, you can do that right here. And then you can have it automatically send out that invoice every single month via email. All right, once everything looks good to go, you can hit create and save. Although I do notice there is a formatting issue. My dates are in non-American format. These are in day, month, year format. And as I've mentioned in other videos, in the United States, we always do month, day, year. Yeah, I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's how everyone does it. So if I were to send off this invoice, literally everyone is going to think it is due on December 11th. Not without any exception, everyone would be confused by this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save for now, but I'm gonna go back over to the settings. Under general, I can actually change my date format. So right now it's in day, month, year. Let's go ahead and change it to be month, day, year. And I will go ahead and hit save. And there we go. Let's double check. Did it update our invoice automatically? Here's our invoice. It's under reoccurring because it's going to be a reoccurring invoice. And let's see. Yep, our dates have been updated successfully. All right, perfect. That's what I wanted to see. All right, so now that I've created this invoice and it's good to go, I can actually view it on the web if I like. Under more actions, I get a email link. So if I wanna send this off as an email, I can do that right here. But I also get a public link, which I can access via that same screen or just right here, I get the public link as well. Copies over to my clipboard. Let's see what this looks like. I'll open up a private window. Now it is a little bit slow to load up this invoice. That is the one part, like the buttons kind of come up one at a time. And then eventually I get the invoice. The logo is still loading up. I think that could be a lot snappier. Otherwise, I like how it looks. It's nice and clean and simple. I got my little note down here. I got the itemized list. Uh, maybe a little bit more spacing. There is a way to change the template for the invoice. So I like this one a lot, it's pretty clean. I would just change a few little things. Like the logo is kind of huge. It doesn't need to be that big, neither does the company name. But if I receive this invoice, it would be clear to me what to do. I could print it right here. I could download the PDF or I could subscribe to begin the reoccurring payments right here. I guess if I were really nitpicking the word subscribe, not as clear as I would like, probably would choose something more like proceed to purchase, something along those lines. And then on the checkout screen, make it really clear that it's a reoccurring cost. So let's check out the other options for our invoicing template. I'm gonna go down to settings and then right under invoice template, I've got three different options here. So we saw the current one, let's go ahead and click on this one right here. There's no preview here. I'd love if it popped open in a preview just to kind of show you what things look like. I'm gonna hit save. Back over the invoices, reoccurring, we'll open this up. And here's what that other template looks like. There is another option here, but you get the idea. They're all pretty clean looking. Um, maybe just some oversized elements, I guess, for me personally, but templates are such a personal thing. All right, with our first invoice created and sent off to our clients, the next thing to do would be to accept the payment. We can see all of the payments we've accepted right over here. Now, this is blank, but as the money starts to flow in, this will be where basically a list of completed invoices will live or the individual transactions, I should be more specific. 
Then we can also track our own expenses here. In fact, it looks like this tool is aiming to become a full-blown accounting tool. Down at the bottom, there is an option for accounting, but it says coming soon. So if you've got expenses for your business, you want to track them all here, you can do that. It does come with some OCR credits on the top end. So if you wanted to scan in things like receipts, we create a, create a new expense and you can attach your receipts here. At the top end accounts, you're gonna get some OCR credits, but that's not available to everyone. We'll go over that a little bit later. I don't have it available to me to demo. Now, oftentimes before an invoice is an invoice, it starts off as an estimate. So what you can do here under estimates is actually create what looks very much like an invoice, but it's not due, right? You're not gonna have a due date on it necessarily. You just have an issue date. Choose a client, add in your items just as before, create and save. Then you just send your estimate over to your client. They open it up in their web browser. They can either accept it or reject it. If they accept it, it will be converted into an invoice and you can go ahead and accept payment. You can also convert an estimate to an invoice manually from the administrator section. Just go to more actions here and then convert to invoice. Notice we also have duplicate as well as preview options here. We can download the PDF. A lot of the helpful things really just live here inside of the more actions tab. Well, it's not tab, but the drop down. Now, a lot of people out there do not charge flat rates for their services. Instead, they bill hourly. For that, you might want to create something like a project. A project is going to have tasks inside of it that you can actually track the time. So let's go ahead and create a project here. I'll just call it website redesign. I can choose my team members. We can add additional team members, by the way. We'll get to that in a little bit. I'll choose my client for this project. I'm gonna choose AppSumo. Set up a project color. Oh, how about uh, green, kind of AppSumo color. We can set it to be billable by default. That means that all new entries on this project will initially be set as billable. We set our rate here. We can give a project estimate based on either time or the overall project budget and choose between manual or task-based estimates. Let's go ahead and hit save. And here we go. I've got my very first project. We can open it up. And here are the items that we're currently tracking as well as the tasks that are inside of the project and any invoices that have been created. So if I wanna add a new task, I'll hit add task. I'll give the task a title. Let's say we're trying to work on the website copy. Then we can set the priority. It can be low, normal, high, or critical. And then we can set our budget estimate here. Let's say it is $1,500. We'll hit confirm. And now we're inside of this task inside of our project. So the website copy is the task. I can go back out. And here is my overall project, website redesign. And then I have tasks right here. When this is all done, I can check a box and it says I will mark this as complete. And there we go. From there, I can create an invoice. The invoice is automatically attached to this project and I can choose whether I'm billing based on a specific task or the time that I've tracked, which I have not showed you yet. There's actually a Chrome extension. So if you're using Chrome and you're working, you can turn on the time tracking while you're working and it will just start to accumulate time that way. But for now, I'm just doing the task-based billing and I can add a discount here if I like. Notice it as soon as I did task-based, it just pulled in that completed task $150 per hour, 10 hours gives me 1500 bucks. Now, if I did want to build not based on tasks, but by tracking time, there's a couple ways I can do this. The first most obvious way is in the left-hand sidebar. This is really good when you want to enter in a block of time manually. So you just go over to the sidebar, choose the project you're working on. So we're doing the website redesign. I'll choose my task. Now there's the option to create a new task here. Let's say I was doing like wireframes. Uh, and now it says no options found, create new task. If I click on that, nothing happens. So I consider that to be a bug, at least in the browser I'm using. So for the sake of demonstration purposes, I will just choose our existing task. And then I can enter in the amount of time that I've worked on it. Let's say it was one hour. And then I'll just go ahead and turn this to be billable. I can set the date when it occurred. Let's say it was yesterday and it was at 5, 10 PM. All right, we'll hit okay. And there we go, we've got our time set. And I will just hit the checkbox here. And now I have tracked that time. It's gonna go ahead and refresh. Now I'm currently looking at my time tracking in the daily view and I'm on today. So I'd have to go backwards to see the time that was actually tracked for that day. But of course I could look at it from a week's perspective. And here is that time. You can also do month and all. So in the month view, kind of like this, you can see what time was spent uh, per day. Maybe it'd be better if they had a little description about what was actually done on that day. Now that's just one way to track time. If you're doing it, maybe using another tool or you just wanna roughly estimate how much time you spent on something, you could do it that way, just typing it in. But if you want to truly track your time with a timer, there's one in the upper right-hand corner here. I can simply just click on that 
and then the timer is running. By the way, there's also the option to use their Chrome extension, which would do similar things. So you can be working online, turn on the timer, and once you're done working, let's say I've worked for 10 seconds now, I want to build the client, I'll go ahead and hit pause. I can assign this time to a specific project and a specific task. Here, I don't even have the option to create a new task, so you definitely have to get that done ahead of time. Now that this is done, I will log this time, and there we go, we have that time tracked. Uh, 29 seconds happened today. So that's time tracking. Let's move along to our teams over here. You do get team members that you can add, but there is a limit depending on the plan you purchase at AppSumo. With tier one, it is just three team members. We'll look at the other options a little bit later on, but you can add a team member right here. And we've got four different user permissions. Admin is the top tier. We have managers, employees, and contractors. And you can kind of see here, maybe just pause it if you're very curious in terms of what permissions each user type gets. The final section is reporting and under reporting, we can go ahead and view our invoice details. We can see specific items, how many times they were sold, view our expense report, any payments collected. We could view that in a report. And finally, we have our time entry details right here. So that is build. Let's head over to the AppSumo deal page to look at the other plans and pricing. We're going to click on view plan details. It scrolls me right down. I have missed you so much. Here it is AppSumo tier one three team members, one workspace, and branding removal. With AppSumo Tier 2, we get 10 team members, five workspaces, as well as branding removal. And then with Tier 3, we go up to unlimited team members and 10 workspaces. Now, Tier 4, you're going to get two additional features. You get retainers, which allow you to charge people for services you will render later. Gotta love that as well as OCR, optical character recognition credits. So this is if you upload a receipt and it will actually scan the receipt and grab all of the information off of it. You get 100 character generation credits per month here. And if you go all the way up to AppSumo tier five, you not only get retainers, but you get unlimited OCR as well as their AI assistant. Yes, there is an AI assistant built into this tool and I didn't show it to you because I don't have access to it. It's only available for tier five. So. I think that's a little sad. I think more people would like to try out the AI assistant, but yeah, gotta spend 700 bucks to do so. All right, there you have it. That is Build. I think it's a pretty high quality tool. I'd be happy to use this if I was forced to, let's say I started a job. This is the tool they were using. I wouldn't complain, it works just fine. It's maybe a little bit slow to load for customers. I'd be a little concerned about that, but everything else about it was pretty straightforward and easy to understand. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a 7.6. You can't go wrong choosing Build as your invoicing platform. I don't know about the AI assistant and the retainers, but everything else looks really solid. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe you learned something, you wanna support the channel, click on my link in the description for AppSumo the next time you're gonna make a purchase, whether it's for build or anything else. Thank you to everybody who has been clicking that link. It is greatly appreciated. You can also head over to clientamp.com where you can get signed up for the free email newsletter. Maybe check out one of our premium courses. My name is Dave Swift. Hit me up with any questions in the comments and I'll see you in the next review.